Do you suffer from lifestyle deficit disorder? The purpose of the Perfect Day podcast is to share simple steps and strategies as a powerful antidote to lifestyle deficit disorder. Listen in as I reveal a path away from disillusionment and dissatisfaction to a life of purpose, joy, and freedom, making every day a perfect day. Perfect days in a world filled with fear, scarcity, and perfectionism. I'm here to tell you that perfect days are far from being perfect, and they're yours for the taking. Thank you for joining us for the Perfect Day podcast. We are live at Dig South, and I have Paul Heinauer of Glass Pro here with us. Paul, welcome. We're so glad you're here. Uh, thank you very much, Koki. This is a pleasure yes, and an honor. Thank you. It's so good to see you. And, you know, pre show, while we were sitting here, you have, I just had this feeling, you have for many years mentored me and been so kind to always say yes. And you always gave of your time and I would ask, you know, could I meet with you and I'm struggling with this or struggling with that and, and you would say yes and I would come to your office and you'd give me some good advice which has always been helpful to me in growing my businesses. And just for a quick second, it just felt like, I don't know, not like the roles had reversed, but it yeah. felt like maybe I put on my big girl pants. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, you definitely... Maybe. Uh, yes, but, that's good. But of course, you continue to grow and give. And Thanks. so thank you for, for continuing to give of your time. Um, I um, love that you're here today and participating in my favorite conference, um, honestly, of the entire year of the entire nation. I mean, I go to conferences a lot. Right. I know you do too. Um, but Dig South is a big one for me. And, um, you know, I wanted to open. I didn't tell you I was going to put you on the spot with right, this. But right. I'm, I'm going to give you a test. Okay, good. And I know you're going to pass it. Okay, good. Um, those of you who don't um, know one of Paul's passions, um, you'll, know it, you'll know it short enough. So, so it's a quiz as to who said these quotes. Okay, good, good. And the first one I want to read, I think, really speaks to Perfect Day-esque living which is about perfect days are not about perfection, right? Sure. I mean, how many mistakes do we make in life? Um, nothing is ever perfect. And so what about this quote? Here's the first one I'll start with. If you're not making mistakes, then you're not doing anything. I'm positive that a doer makes mistakes. This person also said, whatever you do in life, surround yourself with smart people who will argue with you. I this, like that. This person also said, talent is God-given. Be humble. Fame is man-given. Be grateful. He also said, oop, I just kind of gave it away. It's a male. Yes, I see. He, he also said, make each day your masterpiece. You need more? I, I need do. More I, that had that. And I'm, uh... Um, uh, be true to yourself. Help others which is a very big mantra yes, of yes. yours, and you live that every day. Thank you. Make each day your masterpiece. And did I take any more of his quotes? This is from one Coach John Wooden. Ah, uh, yes, it is. Yeah, that's right. I was yes, trying in to... Fact, yeah, he did. The, yeah, I like that. I, uh, I think about him also in terms of uh, when he says about playing golf, uh, uh, never hurry. <laughs> so he's always... Uh, so he has golf quotes, uh, too. Well, he, he, you yeah. just can always have that in terms of he's just uh, right he's really uh was quite special and the thing that you know in terms of uh the perfectionism he always wanted his players to be perfect but not in terms of from a demanding standpoint but that just that they gave and they if they gave his their best and they practice smart and they practice consistently they'd be able to meet their god-given talents he was a really good man. He was a great husband, too. He was a good person. Oh, that's so nice. Yes, yeah. And he was really something. And uh, so many people who played for him, they were his, he was their hero. Well, I know he's been a hero of yours. It's, it's hard not to respect and admire Absolutely. Him. Yes. Absolutely. And um, I also know that, you know, you have shared a love of, of basketball, yes, 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 yes and, and yeah. support the College yes, of Charleston. Yes. What a great year. Yes, fantastic year. And what that coach, what a great job Coach I, Grant has done. Really, really fabulous. Also of it, the former uh, yes, Clemson. Yes, I need to throw out that yes, shout-out. And, and a, uh, <laughs> a, a 
good man, you know, and a kind person, a uh, person who lifts folks up. A nice article that was in the paper right before uh, they went to the playoffs. He did what his coach that he previously worked for, which was he took all of his assistant coaches down to 319 King and bought them brand new custom made suits. I heard about this. I mean, that is just uh, really special. Talk about a pay it forward type of thing. Right. And making people feel special. Yes. So yeah. that was awesome. I did. I heard he, he gave, um, he delivered a speech at a lunch here recently and many were moved. I heard yes. from many different people yeah. about um, him talking about raising attendance at the College of Charleston and right. how that was really pivotal yes. to yes. Um, having a, a winning season this year. And, and I thought that was interesting because it, 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 of course, went off of him in all of his accolades and yet went to yes. the growing um, right, right. attendance and how much right. that really helped yes, the yeah. players feel a sense of accomplishment and, right. and maybe give their best. Yeah, I think so. So I think, that was, um, I think that was a good story. So anyhow, I thought I would open with some, yeah, um, good. some Coach I, I, Wooden. That's nice. Yeah, I can still see that book in my book, bookshelf. Right, yes. right. And, um, you know, we told some good basketball stories earlier this week um, in the podcast when um, someone was telling me his child, who's 5'11", yeah, you know, was nice. looked at by his baseball coach, and he was, had all these baseball scholarships offered to him in 10th grade. And he looked at his coach and said... I'm going to quit baseball and I want to go to basketball. I want to go play basketball for Clemson and he's wow. 5'11". Yes, okay. And, and, and he was supported and yes. his parents supported him. And, and so there's been this theme this week of parents. Um, there's been a theme of um, you can do anything you want to do. And I just feel like um, those things would resonate with you. Yeah. And I would love for you to share with us your story with Glass Pro because it goes back some time. Yeah. Because... I haven't known you, I having had known you for so long, I know that your core values are a big part of how you do business. And so when we talk about, I mean, you just said, oh, he was a great husband. Yeah. I mean, like, that's just not something I hear <laughs> from, yeah. from super successful business people. Right. When I'm, we're yeah. talking about someone who's successful, you just don't hear, oh, he was a great husband. Yeah. And so I just, it, it, it's, it's, it's your lens. Yeah. It's who you are. Well, that's a nice thing to say. It, it, but it is. And so... When we think about how successful you've been with business, um, take us through that journey, if you don't mind. Listeners want to know, I mean, I, I, your story is one of grassroots, yeah. where you started right. and where you are now, right? right? That's good. Yep. So help us help us understand your, 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 the beginning to where you are and maybe some successes and struggles or strategies along the way. Well, I remember the first day I met with, uh, so Glass Pro came from two smaller autoglass companies, uh, Autoglass of Charleston and uh, Autoglass Company. And I remember our first meeting on February 1st at 4975 Dorchester Road, which is where our company is still operating from, uh, in 1995. And I shared with the folks that uh, I wanted to have our value be do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, consider others better than yourself. Don't look to your own interests, but look to the interest of others. And my goal was that the, uh, as a employees, would try to be serving our customers. Right. And that the management would be trying to serve our employees. And that if we could put each other first, and we would have uh, a good chance of success. And from that, evolved the idea of delighting customers, uh, striving to over-deliver. Uh, so we've been, that's been our goal. We've always I mean, tried setting, to iron us. What I hear is you set the company culture super early. I th and the culture was customer service. Right. It, uh, it was. And I loved, I loved reading um, a quote you said, which is, we will never be too big to have an unhappy customer. Right. That uh, We have that in all of our... 12 stores, there's a eight and a half by 11 sign that says we will never be too big to have an unhappy customer. Then there's my, my name and my cell phone number. And the nice thing is Paul. that makes it, but it makes awesome. perfect sense because why would we want to have anybody unhappy? I mean, if they are, we want to fix it. There's no reason. There's uh, uh, one of my other, 
one of my favorite people is Abraham Lincoln, who, you know, one war at a time. I mean, it's like, I want to take care of that customer. I don't want that. That's not a problem. That's a, not an issue. It's uh, much more involved with, uh, I want to win the battle. I don't want to win the war. I want right. to win the war. So I, I wonder, do you feel like, I mean, not everyone subscribes to that. Yeah, right? which I don't understand. And that's not because right. I'm a smart guy. It just so doesn't do make you, sense. Right. And so would you even have a conversation with that person? Or is that person just like, you're in this camp, I'm in this camp? Yeah, I think I, it's always one of those things that's kind of confusing. So we had a, uh, a customer uh, this past week on Tuesday that was disappointed with our service. And uh, it was unfortunate. Ended up there was a little bit more behind that as I looked into it, but always his, is. Yeah, right? his perception though was different, and I called him. I first I sent him a text. He said, "I want you to call me right away." I said, "I'm going to get." Up. I was actually in a meeting, so I said, uh, "I I sent him a text saying, I'm sorry, I'm in a meeting. I'm going to call you at this time. Is that all right?" And in the meantime, I'm going to be looking at your situation. So I kept him updated in terms of what we were doing. I later called him a couple hours later, and I just said, you know, I'm sorry. And his, it was a big deal to him that I called him. I mean, it, sh it shouldn't have been. But it just, the thing I find is people aren't used to getting that kind of service, which is no, that, ridiculous that level and make it, uh, uh, and I think that companies really miss the boat when they don't do that. I think when you make a mistake, try to uh, say, I'm sorry. I wish I did it better with my wife, but I, uh, but I certainly try to do it with my customers. Oh, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. I know Paula, Paula wouldn't agree with that. Yeah. You've married your high school sweetheart, we and y'all have lucky. been married how long? Uh, this will be 39 years this I year. I mean, yeah, that's good. kudos to that. Yeah, thank and you. On that note, this is a great note to go to break. When yes. we come back, I would like to talk with Paul Heinauer about what contribution makes to his means to his perfect days. Thank you for joining us live here at Dig South for the Perfect Day podcast. A perfect day is far from being about perfection. At the root of a perfect day is gratitude, even for life's mistakes. You've got the book, now get the tools. Join me for this exclusive webinar well, I will teach you how to create more perfect days in your life. Welcome back to the Perfect Day Podcast. I'm Koki Barini, your Perfect Day Engineer. We are live at Dig South, and I've got Paul Heinauer from Glasspro here. Paul, thanks so much for being here. Um, on break, we were talking about perfect days for Paul Heinauer, and they involve some awesome sayings and values from not only your mother, but say your family, your employees and your faith, and I, I was moved by what I read. You know, there's been there's been an over a, a theme and a thread that's been weaved throughout many of the podcast interviews here at Dig South this week, and they all involved mothers. Mm -hmm, yes. So you had wrote um, that your mother gave you the value of hard work. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. It wasn't your dad; yeah. it was your mom. Yeah. So tell us about that. Well, uh, my parents were both. Fabulous. Uh, my mom and dad were 49 and 43, respectively, when I was born. I'm the youngest of six. My oh. oldest sister is 19 years older than me. Wow. My mom always, uh, she uh, had lived her life in terms of do your best, God will do the rest. Again, I'm 60, I'll soon be 62. So it was a little bit maybe of a simpler time. But maybe we took things more at face value. Maybe we had a little bit more faith in the system. Um, she was a big believer in uh, our talents. God gave you these gifts, they're yours to invest. And so that meant, in terms of working hard, and uh, it also meant that if you had an advantage that other people didn't have because of uh, these gifts, and we, my dad never made 10,000 bucks, my mom cleaned houses, but we were very grateful. And I know that's a big part of your book. And Absolutely. having that Thank spirit you. of gratitude is so important that it causes you to, the way you interact with people, the way you do your job, the way you, you know, you try to complete it to 100%. And believe me, we fall down, Paul Heiner falls down, Glass Pro falls down. But I think this idea of, and I could tell you right now, and I hope our customers feel like this, I am, every time we get a referral from someone, I mean, that's a gift. Mm-hmm. And we've got to honor that by the way we perform on it. Absolutely. And I, I love you saying Paul Heinauer falls down. You know, I, I, I do find 
a little bit of discomfort in this whole being a perfect day engineer and ambassador because yes. it sort of connotes that I know what perfect is. Right. And I really, really right. don't. Yes. I really don't. And um, it's really in the imperfection. And um, so, and I think it's in being vulnerable and sharing mistakes and how um, the beauty of imperfection. So that being said, um, share with us do you have a mistake or a struggle or something that's happened in your, I mean, you've been basically in the glass distribution and or glass pro business from what I can tell yeah. going back to say 1979. Is yep. that fair? That's true. Yep. I mean, that's, yep. yes. that's Having a long time. Having our own time. business since 86. Yes. You've, you've got some wisdom in there. You've got some tons of successes and rapid growth we could talk about. I think listeners, um, would love to hear a Paul Heinauer struggle and maybe a strategy around it. Well, we've had things where we've made mistakes. Uh, one time we cut a person's uh, dash in a brand new, this is just a couple years ago, um, Ford pickup truck. Well, f- pickup trucks anymore aren't just, it was a $75,000 vehicle. We cut his dash. I mean, it was, that's terrible. And it was an expensive mistake we made. Mm. Uh, I owned it, first of all, which there was no denying it. And we had to find a solution. And and dashes on a truck are kind of hard to replace. And uh, uh, part of the bottom line for this guy was uh, I could give him the money to fix it, which we did. But by taking it out might even be worse because it might be making even more of a sound. And uh, there was nothing I could do to help him other than trying to fix that, but other, and saying, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I think people, uh, and we know this, I, I think if you say, I'm sorry, it's the basic basis to start. I think people give you a little bit more grace. I mean, and I think it makes sense to do that. And if you're trying to hide up something, if we know from uh, our politicians or anyone else, you, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Right, so just being vulnerable and out there and owning it. I think there's no doubt about it. I think so. I mean, I think that's very true. And uh, if you, when when and if we do make a mistake or even the idea that, oh, I knew that and then maybe I didn't say that at first that I knew it, I think you just have to say, be as honest as possible. And Mm -hmm. when you fall down or maybe something happened, I think you got to say it. You better say it earlier as opposed to later. That's the other thing is, I'm, and I'm sorry about interrupting almost you, but it's like, no. I think the idea that uh, the idea that we don't say it, people know it. I mean, our kids, the thing that's so nice, I think about kids is they're resilient. And they, they, if they know you love them, they know you're not perfect. Uh, right. Uh, but they, but they, what the, they do know is that, that you love them. Yes. And what a beautiful thing when you tell them you're not perfect. Yes. I love, that's one of my favorite yeah. things to be able to show my kids my mistakes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so I want to go back to that day in the dash. Yeah, yes. Because I had one of these days uh, this week, in fact. Yeah. Um, not with Glass Pro, I hope. No. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm being within funny. my business. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, that was not a perfect day for you, was yeah. it? The day no. the dash got cut. Yeah, and it was stressful talking to them, and it was painful. I mean, it was just so dang painful. So, like, kind of take us back to that day, and I want to think about, um, like, your mindset. Like, when you got home, was it just this terrible day, and, like, like, like where were you in that space? Was it recent? Was it a long time ago? It was, it was you about more? three years ago, okay. and I remember my initial conversation with the guy after some other people in our company first approached it with them was, you know, this, this needed to be done by me. And mm-hmm. uh, no problem. I don't mind. I love talking to customers. I right. mean, and I feel like there's nobody that can... Feel or the empathy, etc. That's your Eunice. Yes, yes. That's, so that's uh, absolutely so, the value prop you bring. One of the several value props you. you bring to the company. For thank sure. you. And I uh, remember I was up in Greenville, and I was. So it was a phone conversation, and it lasted a long time. Right. And uh, uh, it was. I felt incredibly inadequate. Well, that's. I, I love you sharing that. Uh, let me tell you where we started in this part of the conversation so I can bring us back yeah. was that your mother gave you hard work, that your family gave you honesty and trust. So you were honest with this person yeah. and you gave him your word. You were going to do what you could to fix it. Right. And then um, I'm going to skip past the employees who you said have given yeah. you respect, yes, which yeah. I love that. Yeah. 
But then at the end, you end it with that your faith makes you feel blessed through the ups and the downs. Yeah. I, I mean, don't you feel that those values and, and this idea of your faith can, can fix a perfect day? Uh, and, your, and the value of also your relationships, your, your, your stressing mother and family uh, and employees. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I think the uh, I the other day I was reading something out of uh, the book of John. It was uh, probably somewhere around uh, chapter 13, and it talked about worrying. And one of the things, as I looked through the notes of the Bible, it said about uh, worry is a sin of pride because you're trying to own it as opposed to God owning yes. it. It was really it's nice. interesting, though. I've read that verse so many times. Yeah. It really presented something different for me in terms of having a little bit more trust on the situation and not feeling so arrogant that I needed to worry about it in that regard. Nice. That you could just do the best you could. Yes. yes. And, and then leave the rest to, yeah, to faith. Yes. Nice. So um, we got to wrap here in a minute. Wow. But they really did go fast. You said it was going to. I know. And I could talk to you all day. <laughs> yeah. And promise me you'll let me talk to you again. That'd even after, my pleasure. Even after giving me the time today. Yeah. But yeah, um, you know, I had a, this crazy situation this week where it was not a perfect day. From a personal standpoint with um, a side business and yeah. with, uh, with my goats. I don't know if yes. you know that I've... Wow, worked. I love that. I've got goats and I've, yeah, it's, it's my kid project. Oh, it's my, I like it's it. my parenting plan. Oh, I like it's it. like teach them to take care of an animal yes, in yes. That's discipline. Good. So we had, we had an issue there and I had an issue with a, a, a goof um, professionally. And I got this terrible, terrible email from some random guy yes. you know, who was like, who are you and why do I care? Yeah. I mean, just terrible. Right. And... Um, it's probably 10.30, and I've got my hands on my head, um, head on my hands in the kitchen at 10.30, and this situation had happened, and my daughter, 14, had happened to hear about it. And she, she scampered out after the situation was over, and she put her hand on my shoulder, and she said, Mom, are you okay? And I looked at her, and I said, I'm okay now. Yes. Yeah. And it's like... You have to have this, I call it like this backpack. You have to have this backpack on filled with all your values, your family, your faith. And, and when all of that's in there, you're always sort of prepared to have a perfect day. So it's like all these bad things can happen. But at the bottom line, if you've got your relationships and your faith, it's like the things, rest doesn't really matter, does things it? Things get put in perspective Things get quickly. put into perspective. So yeah, it's nice. With that, Paul, there was so much more we could have talked about. I know you have so much more to talk about in terms of people. People are the heart of your organization. Your customer service is unsurpassed. I can't Thanks. tell you how many amazing experiences I've had, not only with me co coming to Glass Pro, but you sending Glass Pro to my yeah. business. That's to, good. Thank I you. I didn't even have to get in the car. Right, right. Thank so, you for that. how awesome is that? Yes. So, uh, glasspro.com is where everyone can find you. Um, do you prefer them call? How else can people find Glass Pro in uh, all of your many locations? Right, yes, uh, call and certainly uh, email and um, we and however they want it, or they can text me and I'll give them a call back. So uh, it's, it's thank you. Ask Siri where the closest <laughs> yeah, Glass okay. Pro is because there's one right around the yes, corner. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much for joining us here live at Dig South. Uh, we hope you'll be back on the show here soon. And until next time, make it a perfect day.